Today I'm sharing the top 10 fashion mistakes that many of us make and how to fix them. Hi I'm Leonie and welcome back to my channel. Now fashion mistakes are a little controversial I know because really at the end of the day there should be no right and wrong when it comes to fashion. I don't like having rules in pretty much any area of my life, let alone fashion, which is really all about fun and self-expression. But after 20 years of working in fashion magazines here in New Zealand and overseas, there are a few things that I see regularly and I think that they are fashion mistakes and by tweaking them and just making some small changes, we can step out in style every single day. So if you'd like to see what I think are a few fashion mistakes that are easily fixed, then just keep watching. The first mistake that I think most of us make is that we limit ourselves when it comes to fashion. We limit ourselves because of our age or because of our size. There are so many times when I've done personal styling sessions and I've heard people say, say things like, I'm too old to wear that or I'm too fat to wear that. At the end of the day, you're too nothing to wear anything. Fashion is about fun, it is about self-expression and don't limit yourself by thinking that there are certain things that you absolutely cannot wear. So I think it's really important to start with a clean slate. Don't decide that you can't wear something because of something you've read or something someone has perhaps told you really just ignore all of that and start again. Don't limit yourself. I've had people telling me that I should dress my age and at the end of the day, what does that mean? Um, you know, I'm going to be 51 next month and so does that mean I should dress really conservatively or I, I don't know what that means and I don't think it actually should mean anything. I think we should dress how we feel and dress in what makes us feel good. So my number one fashion mistake is to stop limiting ourselves. Stop putting ourselves in a box and letting other people decide what we should and shouldn't wear. Another fashion mistake that I think is often made is the thinking that lots of skin and showing lots of skin equals sexy. And in fact, I think the opposite is actually quite true. Showing little hints of skin but not too much is in my opinion far sexier than showing it all off and leaving nothing to the imagination. I think a gorgeous silk shirt worn with a pair of distressed denim jeans and some heels is super sexy and you're not showing off too much skin. So I think a mistake that many of us fall into is if we want to up the sex appeal and feel a little more sexy that we have to strip everything off and show a whole lot of skin. I think that's a fashion mistake and I don't think we need to show skin to look sexy in clothes. Another mistake is letting fashion intimidate you. Now I know this sounds a little bit strange but we are often intimidated by, by fashion labels and fashion assistants. Now I know that feeling, we'll walk into a fashion store and the staff will look amazing and they're dressed top to toe, immaculately looking great, but we need to remember that's their job. They're in there all day, every day, playing with clothes, creating outfits, styling outfits, don't feel intimidated by that. 
Often that stops us from exploring new stores and new labels and new places to shop. We tend to go to the places that make us feel comfortable and that's all well and good, but it means that we don't explore other labels because we're secretly intimidated. Don't be intimidated. You deserve to look amazing regardless of what the label is and how you're dressed when you walk in the store. The other mistake is listening to what people have told us about what we should and shouldn't wear. Sometimes it's our mothers that have said to us that we shouldn't wear a particular colour or a particular style, but usually that's not always true and trends evolve, fashion evolves and looks evolve, your personality changes. So don't let some of those seeds that have been sown by other people get in the way and cloud your fashion judgment. If you put something on and it feels great and you feel good in it, then it's for you. It does work. Don't let other people dictate and sow a seed of doubt in your mind. So the mistake here is listening to what people have said to you in the past. Another mistake is shopping in the same stores all the time. Now I get that that can feel really comfortable. You know the styles, you generally have a good idea that those particular brands will fit you. But here's the thing, every season the fashion obviously changes and labels also change their look and feel. They will have a new buyer that comes in and starts buying a different look and feel. They all have to evolve their labels. Labels. And I'm sure you can relate to walking into a store and one season everything works for you. The next season, not so much. So what I think it's re is really important for us to do is not limit ourselves by just going to the same stores all the time. Rely on stores that you love and you feel good in, but don't forget to explore other labels and other stores to create your own sense of style and to help you evolve your fashion sense. Now I don't really like to talk about right and wrong when it comes to fashion, but there is one fashion crime that I think is unflattering on everyone, and that is the classic mid-calf cropped pant. Now the issue I have with this is unless you have incredibly lean long legs, anything that cuts you off mid-calf is going to highlight that part of your body. Now the thing is, most of us mid-calf, it's the widest part of our leg. So why would we want to highlight that? So I think unless you've got the most amazing legs, everyone should steer away from cropped pants that hit you and fall mid-calf. Crop pants are fine, but wear them three quarters or wear them just below your knee or just above your knee. You want pants to fall on the slimmest part of your body for you to have the most flattering look. So mid-calf cropped pants are a fashion mistake in my book. That segues in nicely to the next fashion mistake, which I think we can easily change. And that is not wearing tops and skirts and pants that fall at the widest part of your body. So for instance, if you carry most of your weight on your hips, the last thing you want is a top that will fall exactly on that widest part of your body. What that will do is it will highlight that area of your body so the eye is naturally drawn to that part of your body. So therefore it is the most unflattering place for a top to finish on you. Same thing with pants, skirts, shorts, 
everything if you follow the rule of making sure that your tops and skirts and pants fall at the narrowest part of your body. So it may be just below your knee, it may be your ankle. If you do carry most of your weight on your hips, then opt for a dipped hemline, which will draw the eye down the body. It's all about illusion dressing and creating a longer, leaner line. So the mistake is choosing clothes that fall on the widest part of your body. Another fashion mistake is ill-fitting bras and numerous times I have done personal styling sessions and tried the same top on the same woman but the only thing I've changed is her bra and often we're wearing the wrong size bra, the wrong shape bra and the wrong bra for the wrong item. Things like wearing a lace bra, under a t-shirt, it's it's a bit of a science when it comes to bras. And I think it's really important that we get measured professionally and fitted professionally fairly regularly. Our breasts change size and shape depending on the time of the month or it is one part of our body that does tend to change more than the rest of it. So I think it's really important for us to get measured and fitted professionally, perhaps every year, and wear a good fitting, appropriate bra for your outfit and for your body shape and type. A good bra will make an enormous difference when it comes to an outfit. It will really take a simple outfit from zero to hero just purely because you have the right foundation to start the outfit. Another fashion mistake is wearing clothes that are too big. Often when we put on a few pounds, it's really easy to fall into the trap of wearing oversized clothes to kind of, we feel more comfortable and we feel like it's hiding potentially a multitude of sins. Unfortunately, the opposite is usually happening and what it's doing is just creating more bulk and not giving us any shape. So a fashion mistake I find, and I see it regularly, is going up two or three sizes more than you need to when you have put on a little bit of weight. You still need to create a little bit of a shape and a little bit of a silhouette so that you look in proportion. So a big fashion mistake in my book is just wearing oversized, ill-fitting clothes. The other fashion mistake that many of us seem to make is not paying attention to the small details. We can have an amazing outfit on, but if our shoes need rehealing or if they're a little bit scuffed or if our nail polish is chipped, it's those little details that will just pull an outfit down. So a big fashion mistake in my book is not paying attention to the, to the detail, to those little things that really do make a difference. They might be some loose threads hanging from a shirt or pilled knitwear, just small things that are pretty easy to overlook, but tend to take away from the overall look and feel of an outfit. So I think it's really important that we pay attention to the details. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, I would love you to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and what are your fashion mistakes? Are there anything that I've missed out in covering in this video that really grind your wheels when you see them? I would love to hear about them in the comments below. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now. Turn